good. Good hand, right. Guys, yeah, hi everyone. Let me just get my uh, window sorted out now because I couldn't quite see it before. Um, just to make sure that I can see the chat window. I can see there's 83 of you in the room. Um, I'm going to try and make this as practical as possible. Please don't put your webcams on if you can turn off your webcams. If we've got so many people with their webcams, it will really slow it down. And I want to try to make this as interactive a session as possible. Can I just get you, first of all, in the chat window, webcams off, please. Can I get you in the chat window? Uh, to just tell me what room you're currently sitting in, okay? Just out of curiosity, I just want to get an idea of where you're all sitting. So could you just write in the chat window and just tell me what room you're in? Because it always amazes me when we're doing these sessions and when I'm working with my students that people are, of course, all over the place, okay? Uh, right, lovely. So we got living room, we got office, we got uh, some in the bedroom. Obviously, the weather's probably not that good in uh, Spain at the moment because I'm in the past when I've done this, some of you've been sitting on the balcony. Uh, I'm sitting in my spare room. Um, so the kitchen's quite popular. There's a few people in the kitchen, there's a few in the bedroom. Uh, not the most um, conducive to to doing a presentation. It's always really strange that we're sitting now in these really different kind of circumstances. Guys, couple of you, please, please, please turn off your webcams. Can I repeat again? Off with the webcams, please, because it's going to really affect the delivery of the session. Right, another, just another really quick just thing. Can I just check to get a little bit of a feeling for the audience, right? So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Can you tell me whether you are teaching primary, secondary, or university level? Primary, secondary, or university? Just to get a bit of a feeling for what kind of crowd I've got here. Okay, lovely. Two more questions and then we're really going to get started. As I said, I'm going to try to make this as practical as possible. We've got a few postgrads in the room. Great universities. OK, lovely. Secondary, quite a lot of secondary. A couple of you working for the EOIs. I've just did a course with some of you uh, on one of those. Lovely. Right. Next question, just for my curiosity, just two really quick questions. How many of you know about my website? So how many of you know about teachertrainingvideos.com? Just say yes or no. I'm just curious to see. OK, how many? It's about half and half. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe more people don't know it, actually. OK, well, that's wonderful. So it's a new crowd for me as well. Um, obviously, I'm, uh, there are quite a few thousand people who use that website every day. It had three million views last year, so quite popular. Lovely. Right, guys, I'm going to start. And what I want to do is I want to start with something really positive. And I'm going to do a quick screen share. And I know, you know, I'm a trainer, I work at universities, I do lots of lots of teacher training. And um, at the moment, you know, there's been quite a lot of doom and gloom around. We've had a pretty tough, um, but people have also managed to learn quite a lot from the experience of um, of working online. So rather than looking at the negative things, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect together all of your comments um, about how you feel. What have you learned from teaching online? I just want to get a really quick idea. So I'm going to correct, I'm going to work with a technology that's free. Absolutely fantastic. I'll be showing you more about this technology in a minute. Okay. And I, this is just to get me kind of started. I'm going to click on here. I click on the button called new presentation. I'm using a technology called Mentimeter. Okay. I'm going to write, um, so it's APAC, that will do. I'm going to click on create presentation. And the brilliant thing about this technology, and let me make this smaller so you can all see nice and clearly. The brilliant thing about this technology is, is that I can use it to create all sorts of really quick activities. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this one here, open ended question. And I'm going to tell ask you a simple question. What have you learnt from using so much technology okay most of you have been thrown okay but let's co concentrate on something positive whether it's you've learned to manage it better you feel more confident you've learned a second set of particular technology okay hopefully some of the skills that we've developed are going to be really useful when we come back uh, into uh, into a kind of blended learning mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on flow grid. Okay, I'll, I'll go through this in more detail. I've just written a question, nothing else. Really easy to do this. Now I'm going to click on the share button. Okay, and I'm just going to share this link with you. And all I want you to do 
is to click on this link and write in your answer. I'm looking for the positive things. I know there's plenty of negative. So I'm gonna just ask you to click on this link. I'm gonna share it with you now in the share window. So I'm gonna stop sharing and come back. And in the chat window, I'm gonna, sh I wanna collect all your ideas together in one place. So I don't wanna use the chat window. I'm gonna share a link and I want you to click on that link and answer the question. And then I'm gonna get all your answers together in one place. So just click on that technology. It's a free technology, it's called Mentimeter. It's absolutely fantastic for um, collecting ideas together, getting audience participation. So click on the link and just write in your answer. Um, and I'll be, and it will, all of your answers will come back to me, okay? Now what I'm gonna do while you're doing that, so just click on that link for me, is I'm gonna come back onto the screen and I'm gonna see what is happening. And I can already see that a lot of you have answered, seven of you have answered. I'm gonna present this to you so you can see, okay? So people have learned how to create with tech problems. Some people have learned to use different apps to make apps to make the lessons more dynamic, creativity. Uh, someone says they've learned a whole new world out there. Some ways that some people have said new ways to work, speaking and listening skills, great, and ways to access it. Learned lots of new skills. Uh, technology motivates students. That's lovely to hear. That's really interesting that people feel that. Yeah, I know the negatives, guys. That wasn't the idea. Online is tiring is a negative, and I definitely am aware of that. I've been aware of that for many years. I've been teaching online for 20 years. Feeling comfortable teaching online and being more patient. Well done. That's a really nice. I've learned it's fantastic when it works, but often when it doesn't. I think that's a really fair comp comment interaction is still possible great lovely embrace technology as part of our daily teaching learning experience some lovely comments coming in so far 46 of you have now added up your things and you can see that i get all of these lovely ideas together all in one place this is a great way of collecting people's ideas around a technology, uh, sorry, or uh, ideas around a theme. It's great for audience participation, yeah? Lessons are more creative, okay? Lovely. Uh, creativity, communication, nice new ways of approaching content, really good point. Autonomy of the students, lovely. I think that's a really good point. Loads of great points coming out here. I'm just gonna give you a couple more minutes. Click on the link and write up your answer. I've got 52 answers so far. It'd be interesting if we get a few more people right into the screen, okay? Lovely technology, this, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit in a minute. And what I love is the way it presents all the information to me in this scrolling format. It's a really nice way of kind of getting uh, people to share their ideas together, okay? I've got 53 of you voted now. I'm going to stop sharing and just come back. 54 of you now. Let's see if we can get up to 55, which is my lucky number. It was the year that Chelsea won the league for the first time. And it was also the year that my mum and dad got married, 1955. One more answer, guys. Can I get one more of you to write? We're up to 55. I'm going to stop sharing. Lovely. Let me come back. Okay, that's a lovely tool. It's a great way of collecting people's ideas together. It's called Mentimeter. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. I'm just gonna start my presentation. So I'm just gonna jump over, uh, sorry, let me do a screen share. I'm gonna jump over to my presentation. And um, here it is. I, I won't be using it much because we'll be jumping most of the time, jumping around from uh, looking at uh, trying to be really practical. But I'm going to try and do some practical ideas today. I'm going to try to um, give you some emerging ideas to think about. OK, and I'm hopefully going to show you a few useful technologies. One of the things that's really developed from um, the teaching online that most people have been doing is the importance of an approach that's really flipped learning. When we think about teaching online, particularly when we think about teaching online, what we want to do, whether that is hybrid or whether that is um, in a normal blended learning mode or whether it is um, in an online situation, what we kind of want to do is to build a link between the work that the students do at home and the work that they do online in a live session with you. Actually, if I just jump back there and I'm just gonna escape from that, just gonna change that word here because it sometimes it's gonna be a live session, isn't it? And it could be live, it could be live in the classroom or it could be live online, 
Okay, but what we want to try to do in the future is use technology to link these two parts more together. A Mentimeter is, the, is a great technology for this, okay? Because when we work with tools like Mentimeter, we can build this link between what we do at home and what we get the students to do in a live lesson with us on Zoom or in the classroom. This is really what the flipped classroom about is about. It's about connecting the lesson much more. Now, for example, I could have asked you to watch a video for homework, and then maybe in the live session, I could have then got you to share your ideas on the video via Mentimeter, depending obviously whether I'm in the class with the students or I'm teaching online, okay? I could have asked you, for example, to read an article, and then I could have done an activity on Mentimeter at the beginning of the lesson to connect it back to the article, maybe with some questions that I want you to answer. What we're trying to do when we're teaching online these days is to make the best of the time that we are live with the students. We don't want to be using that time for teaching. We want to be using that time to facilitate, if we can, and you can't do it all the time, but if you can, as much group dynamics as possible, okay? So <clears throat> the homework is watch a video, read an article, listen to some audio, check understanding. So do a basic quiz or something to check understanding. And then in the live session, try to use that content, okay? And we need to find the technologies that are gonna help us to make this possible. We're always thinking about this connection. Now at the end, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about this part of the connection. But for now, let's just talk about what the students do at home and what they do in the live lesson. And this is really the flipped approach. The whole idea behind the flipped classroom is basically to think about what we can get the students to prepare for at home so that when they come into the live lesson, we can do slightly different work. And I just wanna quickly jump to that. When we think about the flipped classroom, the basic idea is that we try, we want to try to get the students to do the lower order thinking skills at home, if possible, it's not always possible, so that when we get them into the lesson or online, remember both situations, we get them to do the higher order thinking skills. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean by this before we do another activity. So we might say, for example, get them, it may be that they do a listening at home or they might do a reading at home. They might watch a video at home. They might watch a grammar explanation at home. They might watch a grammar presentation at home. They might do something at home to get a basic understanding of the concept. Perhaps we're trying to teach them the present simple. Perhaps we're trying to look at developing their listening skills with the idea that when we get them into the group situation, when we get them into the group situation, we get them to process this. Now, I use this tactic quite a lot in my ELT classes. So, for example, I might say, students, your homework today is to watch a video about the PET exam, about the oral exam. And then I want you for homework to think of some questions uh, that uh, the examiner might ask you in the first part of the exam. And then in the class, I bring them together. I put them into groups and say, OK, share your questions. And so they share their questions, predicting the different questions that the examiner might ask them. And then I might say, OK, choose the best 10 questions. We're going to do a group work activity now. One of you is going to be the examiner and two of you are going to be uh, the students answering those questions. So we're kind of going from a uh, doing the lower order thinking skills at home to doing the group work activities in the class. Now, this could be exactly the same on Zoom. We need to think therefore about how we link the two parts of the lesson together. And this is where technology can play a really powerful role. It can play a really powerful role in providing the basic information so that when you get them in class, you can process and use that information if they've read an article, if they've watched a video, if they've listened to some audio and make those activities as interactive as you possibly can. So if I just come back really quickly to, um, uh, just come. In fact, let me just come back and to the to the main window a minute, and we'll just actually let's go back to the Mentimeter. So Mentimeter, okay. These are all your comments that you've all been sharing with me. Fifty-seven of you writing that activity easily could have been that I asked you for homework to watch a video 
about the positive things about using technology and teaching and learning that we've all discovered. And then maybe the first activity I do in the lesson is I say to you, right guys, you all watched that video yesterday. Uh, tell me the most interesting points from the video. And then therefore we connect it back to the lesson. Now Mentimeter is a brilliant tool for this. And one of the reasons I wanted to show you Mentimeter is because it's free. There is no limit to the number of activities that you can do. You can create as many presentations as you want and when you create a presentation, you have loads of activity types. Let me quickly show you just very quickly another example. So if I clicked on the home button and I'll click on new presentation and I'm going to write, for example, here, uh, a back two. OK, create another presentation. And in this one, I'm just going to um, I'm going to do a I'm going to simply do a ranking exercise. So I'm going to click here. Notice I've got multiple choice, word cloud, open ended Q&A, which we might use at the end. Ranking scales. These are great for things like frequency adverbs, scale something often, occasionally, etc. Multiple choice questions. Check their understanding. Did they understand the video? Open ended. Lots of different ways that we can use this. Select the answer, type the answer. All of these are free. So it really is a lovely technology. Now, I've got a video for you at the end to help you to learn to use this technology if you want to use it. I really use this a lot of the time. I'm going to just show you an example. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to say, rate, put these, put these technologies, just a quickly example, technologies in order of your favorite okay now what i'll do is to keep i'm going to keep it really simple so what i'm going to put is um all right uh, for example powerpoint because most people use powerpoint then i'm going to put word because a lot of people use words and then i'm going to put youtube and there's going to be curious let us let's maybe add one more in so i'll add that there sorry youtube OK, and I'll, I'll add one more. So just click here. I'm going to add one more option and um, I'll put Skype. OK, so I'm, I'm doing very, very common technologies. OK, so the, all I want you to do now is simply I'm going to again do what I did before. I'm going to click all I want. So once I've created the questions, I click on the share button here. And I'm going to just copy that link again. OK, it's a completely different type of activity. This one. OK, actually, one thing I'm going to. Yes, that's OK. Yeah. So I'm just going to click a minute and just show you actually what that I'm going to do this activity so you can see me doing it. So I'm going to jump over to another browser and just paste that in. I know you can't see this at the moment. I'm going to screen share it. OK. Um, hang on a minute. Sorry, sorry, guys. Hang on one, one second. I just made a small mistake. There are apologies. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just made a, a small mistake. Just going to come back. I need to click again and create. A new presentation. I did that. I did that one slightly wrong. Apologies. Let me come back in again. Hopefully now it should be okay. So we got yeah. So got the four choices, and I'm going to click on the share button, and hopefully this time I've got it correct. Okay. Click on that link. Okay. So what? Hopefully now, if I jump over, I'm just going to show you what this actually looks like. If I Put the right link in. Hopefully, I got it right this time. Okay, one second. Sorry, guys, I've got a small problem there. I've done something wrong. My completely my fault. One, one second. I'll have to redo that all again. Apologies. Right, I wasn't very good. It's tr it's the trouble of me trying to do this all live. Let me go back and do that again and get it right this time. So let's do. A pack C. Okay, let me. I'll, I'll, I'm going to screen share so you can see what I'm doing. A pot. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, lovely. So you should see it again. So I'm going to create a presentation. And I'm, once I've added the presentation, I'm just going to choose one question. So I'm going to click on ranking. I'm sorry. And I'll just put that again. So I'll quickly write them in Skype. So ranking that these rank these technologies. We're going to write rank these technologies. And then I'm going to put item one. So we're writing Skype. Item two, I'm going to write in, um, let's put in Word, Microsoft Word. Item three, we'll put PTT for PowerPoint presentations. And then item four, um, let's think of one more. Let's put in, for example, uh, YouTube. Okay. 
Right, now, hopefully I've got this right. So we've got these four choices. I'm gonna click on the share button, okay? And then click on this link. This time I've got it right, sorry about that. Come back to the new, uh, come back to the uh, to screen sharing. So I'm gonna click on stop. Now what you need to do, I put paste the link in, apologize for that guy, paste in the link again, I'm gonna share it with you. All you need to do, okay, is just again, click and then choose the drop up down menu, which one's the first, which one's the second, which one's the third, which one's the fourth. I just wanna demonstrate, again, a free tool that's brilliant for using if we're trying to connect what we're doing in the lesson with what we might wanna do online with our students. Now, what I'm gonna do is screen share that. Hopefully you've clicked on the link. If I just jump back to the screen share, what you should see, hopefully, is that as people are voting, and I can see as there's only one person voted so far, so I'm hoping to get some more people voting. Okay, I've got two people voting now. And as you vote, it will change. So as, as people vote on which one is first, which one is second, which one is third, don't forget you just click on the drop down menu, choose which one is first, which one is second, which one is third, which one is fourth. Okay, at the moment, a bit slow. I've only got two people voted so far. Okay, let me just come back again. I'll come back to the uh, stop share and I'll just come back and see why people haven't voted. Um, everyone, not, okay, sorry, okay, let me see send this to everyone in the meeting. It went to the wrong people, sorry. There we go, sorry, it went to everyone in the waiting room. <laughs> Good, there's the link, click on the link and you'll notice that you can choose which one. So this could be really nice if you wanna do a ranking exercise, a voting exercise. You wanna get audience participation, either in the live session or of course you could set it for the, for the homework as well. So hopefully you can see that link now. And if I just come back now, I can see, yes, that now it's working and people are voting and I can see YouTube is the most popular and PPT is in second place at the moment. Word is in third place. Uh, ah, Skype has gone up into third place now. And she, now Skype's gone back down to fourth. And you can see that all the data is live. As you are voting on it, that information is coming onto the screen. So this can be a great way of collecting together students' opinions, ranking something. It could be associated with a video that you've asked them to watch or a reading you've asked them to watch, but it's a great way of trying to connect what they're doing for homework for what they're trying to do in the main lesson. I've got 70 of you have voted so far. Well done, guys. Just give you a couple more minutes. So what I like about these technologies, and I'm going to slow down in a second, just really focus on this, is the fact that this is one technology. It's free and you can do loads of different things with it. And it, as you could see, as long as you don't make a mistake like I did, it's actually pretty easy. You make the question, you share the link. Now, the other interesting thing, if you are teaching hybrid guys, this is a wonderful technology because if you notice at the top of the screen, students can access and answer the questions on their telephone. So if you've got the students in class, they can answer on their telephone. And if you've got students on the internet, you can share the link in Zoom and they can answer. And everyone is answering the same question. And this is one of the things that we wanna do with hybrid. When we're doing a hybrid, we wanna create activities where both the students in the class and the students at home are accessing the same activities. And this way we create a bit of a dynamic that it is one lesson. Because one of the problems with hybrid teaching is often this feeling that you are doing a lesson and it's almost like two lessons. You've got one group in the class and you've got some students online. So these tools are brilliant for hybrid teaching. Um, certainly for me, Mentimeter in 2020, because it wasn't a technology I used that much in previously, but now I'm using it all the time. I really do like Mentimeter and I recommend um, that we uh, do that. So great, lovely to see that YouTube's the most popular. And I will point out something really quickly about YouTube if I get a couple of seconds at the end, but I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna come back into the main talk. Sorry, I got that wrong guys, but hopefully you can see that Mentimeter has got lots and lots of options, okay, as a technology that we can use to kind of build this link. Keep thinking about this link between what you're gonna get the students to do for homework and then what you might do in a live session with them. You wanna link them together. That's really the key idea behind the flipped classroom. Right, let me jump back to my presentation and then we'll uh, do a little bit more work. So we're always trying to look 
to do the lower order thinking skills at home and to do the higher order thinking skills in the class. And I'm going to try and do an example with you now using a different technology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a new share. I'm going to come back to our wonderful Mentimeter. I may use this technology a little bit at the end again, but I'm going to jump over to something completely different now, and that's Google Earth. Now, if you saw my presentation earlier in the year, I think I used Google Earth with you, but I'm going to do a completely different activity now. Google Earth is a great technology to use for presentations. And I often get my students, for example, to choose a special place they like and then present it to the class. Um, and um, you'll see it's really powerful. I'm just going to write Stonehenge. Most of you probably know where Stonehenge is. And we're going to zoom off to Stonehenge. And I'm going to do a little presentation for you. And I just want you to listen. You might want to take a few notes. I'm just going to tell you a few things about Stonehenge. You can see it here. I'm just going to come in a little bit closer. I'll just close this down to make again nice and clear. I'm coming a bit closer so we can really see Stonehenge clearly. OK, this is a completely free website. We can go 2D. OK, and we can also go 3D. So I'm going to go 3D. And as I'm talking, as I'm as we're looking at it, I'm just going to tell a little story about Stonehenge. So uh, Stonehenge is one of Britain's most famous monuments. Um, they now realize that the stones that are from in Stonehenge actually come from Wales and they can't believe that in the, I think it's the monolithic period, that some, that they were able to transport these enormous stones all the way from Wales to England. They really don't understand how they did that at that particular time. Now, one in, interesting thing about Stonehenge as well is that recently they've discovered that there are actually many, many similar structures all over Great Britain, including on some of the islands right up in Scotland, especially nowadays because they can x-ray the land and they take these kind of photographs from above. They've discovered many more of these kind of Stonehenges. Now, when I was a kid, you could actually just walk up to Stonehenge and just go there. And I remember going there when I was young. Now it's all fenced off. But in reality, and if I just kind of move out a little bit so that you can see this, the British or the English have never really looked after Stonehenge. For a long time, it wasn't really considered that special. And you might notice here that there's actually a motorway or it's actually a dual carriageway going right past Stonehenge. It's called the A303. So What's happened is that slowly, you know, in the past, OK, let's just build a motorway there or a big road there. No problem. And now, of course, they totally regret it because obviously there's a lot of noise. And in fact, if you're driving on the A303, you can see Stonehenge perfectly. It's there right on your right hand side. In fact, we might even be able to just drop. Let's see if we can do this, perhaps. In fact, let me just bring you down so you can really get close to Stonehenge, OK, and just see it. And this is kind of, this will give you a bit of an idea. If we just turn around now, and there you can see all the people looking. You can see the kind of fence on the outside. And there it is, that's Stonehenge. And unfortunately, as I've said, that there is a very busy road, the A303, and it's actually a dual carriageway. And now what they're doing is they're gonna build a tunnel so that this road can be hidden and it's gonna cost them millions and millions of pounds. And obviously if they hadn't done that, then it would, um, you know, they would have saved themselves millions and millions of pounds. But in the past, unfortunately, they didn't think uh, that Stonehenge was that important, obviously. Now, I'm going to just stop that share and I'm going to get you to do an activity now. Now, that could be a video that I've asked you to watch at home. That could be a reading. I just did that to make it interesting. What I'm doing now is I'm going to give you an activity to do. I'm going to click here and I'm going to use perhaps for me one of the most interesting technologies that I came across for language learners in 2020. Really, really on my website, this was incredibly popular. And I'm gonna show you by just clicking on start. And let me just actually click and just do a new share and make sure you can hear the sound effects, okay? Now, what I want you to do uh, is to rewrite. So the stones are, take, or perhaps I should have said that were taken, but anyway, are taken 
from Wales. Okay. Okay. So you got the first sentence right. Now I'm going to move on to second sentence. Okay. So uh, this one's going to be Stonehenge. Oh, so there. Let's actually let just to help you. I'm actually going to show you the sentences as I originally wrote them. Okay. So if I click on the edit content, we can see here the stones are taken from Wales. The A303 dual carriageway is right next to Stonehenge. Stonehenge is in the southwest of England. There are many similar structures around Britain. They are building a tunnel to make the area quieter. And I did, I forgot to tell you the last bit. It's very near to Glastonbury, okay? So now you can kind of see the sentences. I literally just wrote those sentences and I clicked on done. And it makes the activity immediately. So it's really a great way of, of, of uh, really quickly doing an activity connected to a presentation. Again, this could be something that the students do at home or it could be part of a lesson they could work on Zoom. Now I'm gonna do this with you. I'm gonna just simply click on share, okay? And I click on set assignment and I'm gonna click on enter name. So I want your names, so I'm gonna click on start and I'm just gonna copy that link and I'm gonna ask you see if you can complete the sentences based on the information that I told you about Stonehenge. So I'm gonna click on stop share. I'm gonna share the link in the window. So again, to everybody, okay? If you click on that link, you should be able to do the activity. The activity is to put the sentences in order, okay? I'm just gonna give you a couple of minutes to do that. Now, the powerful thing about WordWall is that it allows you to make 36 activity types. And after, in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you a few more of these activities that we can do when we're working with WordWall. It's a really lovely technology for again trying to connect the lesson together this whole idea perhaps they've watched the video at home now in the lesson we're going to get them to do an activity where we're perhaps going to check their understanding or we could ask them to do this at home so we could have asked them to watch a video and then check their understanding using this technology you can build lots of activities around um, the base content that you create, okay? I'm just gonna give you another couple of minutes. If I was to screen share, it will actually tell me, if I just click over here, because one of the brilliant things about this technology is if I click on the results, it's live updates me. And you can see I use this technology absolutely masses. And I can see how many of you have completed the activity. Now at the moment, no one's completed it. Okay, so it might have been a bit tricky, that particular one. Maybe I made the sentences too difficult for you. Sorry about that. So what I will do is I'll come back and just remind you of the correct sentences, all right? So that you, um, so if I just click back on um, my activities, and I'm just going to remind you again. I think it was this one here. Let me just click on it. Yeah, so just to remind you of the answers, so to make it easy for you, okay? Edit content. The answers are, the stones are taken from Wales. The A303 dual carriageway is right next to Stonehenge. Stonehenge is in the southwest of England. There are many similar structures around Britain. They are building a tunnel to make the area quieter. Stonehenge is quite near to Glastonbury. So those are the sentences that you need to write to get that, to get through that activity. Sorry, I may, probably made it a bit too difficult for you um, just for the sake of a presentation, but I wanted to see, uh, I wanted you to experience these technologies live and to actually do them. I can see now that some of you have started to complete that. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes just to do that activity. The reason I'm showing you this technology is that if you, for one technology, you get about 36 different activities. It is absolutely fabulous. So, so far, four of you have completed the activity. Now, 17 of you have completed it. So I'm just gonna give you a couple more minutes. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to finish it. I'll just have a one mo mo moment of silence and so give me a chance to drink a cup of tea and for you to complete that exercise. One second.
Okay, we'll come back and have a look in a minute. Wait until I show you. It's lovely to see someone saying it's a great tool. Wait until you see all the options. I'll sh I've got some other activities I'm going to demonstrate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, okay, how easy this technology is to use. I'm sorry I made that activity too difficult. <laughs> I wanted to kind of link a presentation in Google Earth so that you could get the feeling of maybe this idea that you do an activity at home, you watch a video, you listen to a presentation, you read an article, but then you do the associated activities in the class in groups, maybe on your own, you could do this again. Um, okay, Pat, Pat, I promise you, it's more than quite good. Uh, it was by far the most by far the most popular technology that I showed in 2020. In a minute, you're going to see. OK, let's have a quick look at what you've done. I know you haven't all finished. Don't worry if you haven't. I'm going to come back and just show you a little bit more about this technology. But remember, the point I'm trying to make, link, link, link. We're trying to connect things together all the time. I'm just going to update it. And I can now see how many of you have finished. There's 45 of you have finished. Sorry, I made that activity too click. But look, I can click now and see exactly what you've done. And I can see how long it took you and what you, yeah. So it gives me immediate feedback, okay? Absolutely brilliant because I can track students and I use this technology all the time. Now look here, if I click on create activity, I have all these match activity, quiz, random will, group sort, find the match, open the box, random cards, matching pairs, missing words, unjumble, which is just one activity. Look how many they are. And this is specifically for language teaching. Now, the good news about this is that you can have a free tool and you can use five activities for free. Now, if you want to have 10 activities for free, you need to sign in with two different email accounts, which is what I originally did. I'm going to show you another example. I'll do a really nice, easy one just to show you the variety of activities. So I'm going to click on my activities and we're just going to do another one. You can see I really use this a lot. So let's do this uh, for, uh, say, this one here, really simple. OK, so low level. And in this particular one, if I quickly do it, all you've got to do is just put the continents in and the countries in and the cities in. And I just put the words into the correct category. Really, really simple to do. And it took, took me literally seconds to make this activity. I just wrote the words and then clicked on the button. So what we're looking here is the activities that we can do that can build that link between what the students access at home and what they've done in class. So again, you, you, you've, got, you know, you've got to just think about how easy it is. And if I submit, it gives me immediate feedback. So this is just another of the 36 activities. So I'm going to click on share and I'm going to get you to do this one just to get a feel for how useful this, uh, in, this technology is. As, as I said, it was voted the number one technology on my website for language teachers in 2020. Okay, so we're gonna get you to enter your name. I'm gonna click on start. Same thing again, I'm gonna copy the link and I'm gonna come back again, stop sharing, come back and share the link into the window. Again, just click on it and do the activity really quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna send that to everyone. What I love about this is that we're getting 36 activities. Now you can only use five for free. But what you could do, and you, once you've made your five, you can edit them and use them again and again and again and again and again. But you can only choose five different activities. If you want to use 10, do what I did. I had two accounts. OK, now I've actually got a paid account, but uh, because it's actually very cheap. But that's entirely up to you. I don't obviously that entirely something you might want to look into. But to be you're limited to five free activities. OK, but it's a wonderful tool. OK, I'm not sure you'll have to check on the online. I'm not a, I'm not a salesman for Word War. It's quite reasonable. Um, it's I think it's a, I think if I remember rightly, I'm paying about six or seven pounds a month to to have as many activities as I like. I can use the, all the activities, but start with the free tool, guys. You can create five activities for free. And I did that for a long, long time. OK. Right, let's have a quick look. Uh, one of the things is, and I'm going to show you as well, I've used this just like with Mentimeter with enormous classes, three, 400 people doing teacher training sessions with me. Yeah. OK, good. Lovely. Thank you for sharing the link to the prices. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. OK, guys, let's have a quick look. 
So we're going to come back again. Okay, and if we jump back to that, I can same just the same as, as before. I'm going to just show you if I go to my results. Okay, and then I come down to my latest activity. I can see how many new how many of you have done the activity. So so far, 34 of you have done it. Be great if a few more of you could do that activity. And if I click here, it gives me a breakdown. Okay of who did it the quickest, et cetera, et cetera. Now this one you can't get wrong. So there's no incorrect answers, but you just it, it shows you who did it the quickest, okay? So what I love about these technologies, again, is this fact that we can link the two parts together. And these are the types of technologies that you could use in an online context like I'm doing now, but can also work really well in the classroom with your students as well. Okay, so you've kind of got the option. And as again, if we just click back on the My Activities, just look here at how many activities I've been making with it, okay? Using include the will, put the adverbs into the correct order. This one's an ordering, like sometimes, uh, occasionally, very often, blah, blah, blah. Um, all sorts of different activities that I'm doing using this gap fill activities, uh, et cetera. You really have a lot of choice when you're working with this technology. Okay, let's come back to the presentation. So just gonna do a new share, okay? So what we're trying to do all the time is think about how we could get the students to really get more involved. I think one of the things about teaching online or teaching in a hybrid context, flipped classroom, blended learning is that we want to get the students to, to take a little bit more responsibility for their own learning. And that's the part that the students do at home. Okay, so that then the classroom time can be more applying working with it. Now, in the second example, I gave you there, that really is more the type of activity you might have asked the students to do after they've watched the video or after because when you want the students to do an activity at home, you don't want them to just watch a video. You need them to watch a video and do an activity just to check basic understanding. And then you want to use the classroom time or the Zoom time, the live time, to try to do more group work activities, more group based, based learning. OK, when you're working in this kind of approach, you can kind of think about it as if you're using two approaches to learning. At home, the students are working alone. They're often watching a video, reading an article, and then checking their understanding. It's a very behaviorist approach. And why you want to do that is so that the class time, to some degree, don't can't exaggerate this, the class time is spent more doing group work. Now, that group work can be online, like we're doing now. And of course, I could put you into breakout rooms, or it could be in the classroom. So the flip classroom definitely applies to online learning in very much the same way as it applies to a normal blended learning class. In other words, we want to try to maximize the way we use the time with the teacher. Now, one way of thinking about this is to kind of think a little bit about what does a teacher do good or do well, sorry, and what does the technology do well? Well, teachers are great for clarifying. They're great for dealing with questions. They're great for facilitating collaboration. They're great for giving feedback. Teachers can give really effective feedback on what the students have done. So a teacher can, we can look at the affordances of a teacher and think we are gonna try to maximize the time in the class or in the Zoom session doing these things because this is what a teacher can do well and there are others i'm just trying to get you get you to think in this way but what can a tech what can technology do well well technology can do the input well whether it be a video or be audio or be reading technologies are great for repetition so they're good for kind of formative assessment and checking things repetition of vocabulary learning technology is great for dealing with the lower order thinking skills if it's clear, if it can be delivered in a clear way. So when students have just got to work on some basic ideas, technology can often be very powerful in doing that. Technology can also encourage collaboration. OK, you saw an example with Mentimeter. Technology can encourage students to become more autonomous if we teach them to use, uh, for example, YouTube, etc. Then we can really get them to be a little bit more autonomous in, in terms of their learning. And that's certainly some, something that the technology can support. 
to technology is a great performative assessment. So one way when we're working in this kind of flipped classroom mode, we're thinking to ourselves, lower order thinking skills at home, making use of the technology, higher order thinking skills in the class, making use of a teacher. Now we can use in a classroom or in a live session, wherever we are, we want to try to make sure that it's a great opportunity for collaboration, for students working together, for working on things, for, 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 for doing those types of activities, okay? So that is a kind of way that we can think about both the online component or, or what I'm talking about, flipped classroom can either apply to online or can apply to um, a face to, or sorry, on, online or, or can apply to blended learning when we've actually got a live classroom. And hopefully the technologies I've also showed you can work in a hybrid type of situation as well. So it's always looking at this idea of building a link between what we do at home and what we do in the live session, okay? Now, when we're working with hybrid, we're, tr we're thinking the same thing but what we're thinking is, just like I did there with uh, Mentimeter, for example, or with can we have some of the students online working on an activity and the students in the class working on the same activity? And the way you can often do that is through technology as well. So Mentimeter would be a perfect example. Uh, WordWall would be a perfect example. Now, I'm going to show you one more technology before I kind of finish today, and I'm going to jump back to and do a new share and just jump back to the presentation and just really talk about something else that I've been using quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to just jump down to it now. And that is quizzes. Okay. Another free technology and another one. <laughs> Guys. Okay. Lovely. Listen, just don't worry because what I did do is I had organized a handout for you all, okay? And if you email this, you will get all the videos to show you how <coughs> to use Mentimeter, how to use uh, WordWall, which was the most popular technology on my website in, 19, in 2020, and how to use quizzes, which I never got to show you, but the video is there. And I also show you how to use Google Earth, which is the technology I use to do the presentation, okay? So I'm really sorry, guys, but if you want the handout, just email russellhandout at gmail.com, put the subject uh, APAC, um, APAC, and then just put, say, hello, this is blah, 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 from blah, 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 and automatically you will get the handout. And what I've done in the handout is I've got videos to show you how to use um, quizzes, videos to show you how to use um, WordWall, which I told you is very popular, quizzes on uh, a video on how to use also Mentimeter. Okay, so I know we didn't end up doing the third technology, but we got through two of them and uh, we managed to do about four activities. We're a little bit unlucky there at the end. I don't know what happened. Um, a big thank you uh, for being to APAC for inviting me along. And tomorrow I'm doing a workshop. I hopefully get a chance to work with these technologies a little bit more, plus a couple of others. So um, I'm going to stop there and um, hang on a minute. I got kicked out again. No, I didn't no, get no, kicked no. out. No. Okay, <laughs> this time I didn't get kicked out. All right, sorry. I'm just uh, right. Okay, so that's just just if you want to contact, if you want that handout, just put that email address: russellhandoutgmail.com. Apac, just say hello to me, and you will get the handout with all the videos to help you using quizzes, Mentimeter, and WordWall. And sorry about a bit unlucky there. I'm not quite sure what happened. Yeah, we don't, I'm so sorry, everybody. No problem, no problem, I just no problem. To say that in the program, you've got the web page, uh, Russell's web page, and you've got his uh, the way to follow him on, on YouTube. If you subscribe to his channel, and you can see all his videos. That'd be great too. Okay, sorry about that, guys. But anyway, we got through two of the technologies. I hope that was useful.